I'm starting. So today I'll try to present you uh, our work with uh, Saladin uh, Thomas. The work is that uh, we're going to study the flow level performance model. We create this model for the mobile network carrying the adaptive streaming traffic. So this is my outline. First of all, I'm trying to introduce you what is the introduction, the topic that we study. And then I'll give you the performance model that we use to uh, analyze the performance metrics and in different conditions. And then I will try to propose you a approximation model, which is the, the model we, we trying to, uh, we're trying to solve the difficulty that we face when we, uh, when we solve the question on the, uh, in, the, in the case that that is a heterogeneous radio condition and elastic data inside. And then I will give you the numerical analysis and conclusion and future work. So let me try to introduce something. So um, as we know, based on the report I mentioned here, uh, the, traf the video traffic will come for 50% of traffic in the future mobile network. So that make video very important uh, in the future network. And the volumes of streaming, based on the report, will increase uh, 15 times from 2013 to 18. So we are in the, this period. And most of the streaming that mentioned in this report here is the adaptive streaming. That is why we choose HTTP adaptive streaming as our uh, study object. And what is the HTTP adaptive streaming? It's like, just like YouTube, uh, Netflix, and Mo Daily Motion. So what is our objective? We want to create a performance model uh, which can uh, help us to do the performance analysis. Yeah. So what is HTTP adaptive streaming? So it, it worked like this. Uh, this is a user, I mean, in the cellular network, one of the user, and he will experience some throughput uh, variate during the, his video consumption. And uh, for example, he will, uh, he will download the, the video uh, chunk by chunk. For example, here, uh, take an example, for example, five, uh, five seconds. And then he will start to download the, the, code, the one of the chunk here with the codec one. And then, he, when he finished this codec, he will start to download another codec uh, based on the throughput that he observed at that time. So uh, he can choose different codec based on his throughput. And this is so-called adaptive streaming. And another benefit that we, uh, when users are using adaptive streaming is that uh, they can buffer, buffer the video inside, uh, inside their buffer so they uh, I mean, the, the, perform the, the service can tolerate more uh, channel variation. So here are some related work. Uh, before we study the HTTP adaptive streaming performance, there are already some paper they study the real-time adaptive streaming. For example, the papers of Nidhi, uh, papers of Toma, I just mentioned here, they studied the uh, performance of real-time adaptive streaming. They didn't consider any uh, impact of buffer. So here we, in, we, we include the impact of buffer so that uh, a user, I mean, this is a completely different kind of service uh, as a real-time adaptive streaming. So uh, here a user can, when they have buffer, play out buffer, they can, uh, they can buffer the, the, the video packet inside and then uh, play out later. And there are also some paper, they study the performance of adaptive streaming uh, for example, the 2013, this one. Uh, so they choose uh, the starvation probability as the KPI, main KPI they study, and also the start startup delay. So the starvation probability is that uh, when there's a user which, uh, who, start, who read the, the HTTP adaptive streaming, and once the buffer is empty, then we call starvation. So these are the KPI they study. So we, uh, but in this paper, they didn't study the adaptive codec, so there's only fixed codec. So here we propose a model consider adaptive codec inside and also the integrations of elastic traffic. And we define several KPI that we want to study. So I go into the performance model. First of all, I will just introduce uh, the streaming model and then I will try to make it more complex. <coughs> so. This is the system model that we propose for HTTP adaptive streaming. First of all, we assume that there is an end user and a streaming flow inside the, inside the system. And each of, uh, every of these 
streaming flow, they experience the same channel condition. So uh, both of them have uh, R, physical throughput. And then we assume that there is a flow arrival rate uh, of these kinds of user flow, lambda, and the video duration they are trying to consume is uh, exponential distribution with uh, mean t. So here we trying to we here we say sounds we set up some assumption, trying to make the uh, system easily to study with the queuing theory. So uh, so as I say that the the adaptive streaming they will uh, download their chunk uh, chunk by chunk and then uh, based on their throughput. So uh, flow, we said we first set up an assumption called that uh, zero chunk size. So that with this assumption, flow can, each flow can update their codec rate as uh, any time they want. So we say that the codec rate is C of x, and uh, also simultaneously. The second assumption that we made here is in finite buffer size. Why we make this as it a hypothesis? Because uh, uh, inside, but when we try to use the, the models of queuing theory, uh, when there is a user inside the queue, inside the system, they can they will consume a lot. The, they will consume the resource. But uh, if we consider the buffer size here, which is a, a limited number, then the user may be in the system, but they don't download anything. So here we're trying to facilitate the model. So the second hypothesis that we use is the uh, uh, finite buffer size. And based on these two assumptions, and the third one, which is the ex exponential distributed uh, video duration with the mean t, we say that we know that uh, the remain flow, uh, video flow size when there is a user come or leaving the system will be also exponentially distributed, but with the mean of c, x, c of x times t. So, uh, so we know that when there is a user, when there is a flow leave or come into the system, uh, we know that what is the distribution of the uh, flow size that the streaming user will trying to consume. So, if we have this flow size, we can define what is the flow departure rate of the uh, streaming. So, it's defined like this: mu s is the phi of s, uh, phi, phi s divided by the sigma s. So the sigma s here is the flow size. So as I say that the flow size is defined by c of x uh, multiplied by t, so that uh, the mu x is defined like this. So here we're trying to uh, play, in, uh, play with the parameters of adaptive streaming. So first of all, we say that we define how we select our codec. So as I say that the codec will be depend, will depend on the throughput. So we first define our throughput is gamma x, which is the uh, the capacity of the cell divided by the numbers of the flow. And then there are two scenarios. One of them is without any codec limitation. And the second one will be there is some codec limitation. For example, when we, you, when, we, uh, re, when we see a YouTube video, we know that there is a maximum codec rate and there is a minimum codec rate. So we try to introduce this uh, parameter inside our model. So here, when there is no any codec limitation, then the throughput will equal to the codec directly. And if there is a code limitation, then the code, the code itself will be bound by the C max and C min. So if we define this, this codec, and then we, will, we can obtain the mu s here. And with the mu s and the lambda that we defined before, we can calculate the stationary distribution because there is a reversibility like this. So having the stationary distribution, we define Next, our performance metric. So here are the three performance metrics that we define for the streaming. So the first one is the average coded rate. So as I say that if you, you, you know now, you now know you the stationary distribution of uh, the system. So you just, uh, you you just uh, multiply the, the, the probability with the codec. And here we weighted, the, uh, weighted the, the, our metrics by x. Because uh, uh, when you have more, more user in the system, the user will have more, uh, more probability to experience the, the KPI here, CX, for example, is CX. So that, that is why, how we calculate the, these three metrics. So the first one is average code rate. So just like this, you sum up all the CX. And the second one is the deficit rate. The deficit rate is, a, is defined by the probability that your throughput is lower than C mean. 
just like this. This is the, the one of the user who experienced the different throughput. The, the black one is the throughput, and the, the red one, red, red line here, is the codec that he chose. So you can see that the codec is bounded by the Cmax and Cmin. And then the, def the definition of deficit rate is the probability that the user will stay in the, in the buffer consumption state. So this is a one of the metrics we define. And the third one is the buffer surplus, surplus that we define. So how we define this? It's also defined by the stationary distribution, but uh, we, we say that uh, we define by the gamma minus CX divided by CX. So the meaning of the buffer surplus is the, the volumes of the blue part minus the, uh, the volumes of the green part. So this metric can reflect what is the buffer variation of each user. So first, first we define, uh, we create our performance model with only streaming service, and then we try to include more uh, parameters, for example, the heterogeneous radio condition and elastic data. So this makes the, the, the system very, the model very complex. So, uh, so now we have several class, and uh, these class are defined by different, uh, different, uh, different statistical throughput and uh, different uh, kind of service. For example, E here is represented by elastic, and S is streaming. So the, the PI here is the proportion of uh, different radio condition, and the uh, PE and PS is the, is the proportion of uh, flow arriving rate for the different service. So the x here is uh, the state that combine every number of each of the class. So the system will look like this. So you have several queue, and these queue are the processor sharing queue. They share the base, sta the base station resources, <coughs> and then the arriving rates of each class is defined by this. Lambda, uh, the state of uh, elastic data at uh, radio condition i is defined by PE multiplied by pi and lambda. So we have this model. And then we calculate same as the before, the departure rate, like uh, for elastic data, will be the allocated resource divided by the flow size, the mean flow size of the elastic throughput, and for the streaming traffic will be defined like before. And uh, we're using the round robin scheduling so that the allocated resource allocated for EI, these classes, will be the numbers of uh, EI divided by the, all the user in the system. So without, with this, we can solve the, we can solve the, uh, the stationary distribution, pi, uh, pi x here. But uh, the complexity will be very high when you're trying to solve this because we don't have any reversibility so this is the question that we want to solve. So then we propose a propo uh, approximation model. Uh, here, because the, as, as I say, the complexity of solving the previous stationary distribution is too large. So we propose a model which is more simpler. And then uh, this model can simplify the multiplex Q into just two, two, uh, two Q. One, one of them represents the elastic traffic. The other one repre represents the streaming traffic. So the number x that we define here is uh, xe and xs for the number of elastic and streaming flow. So as I say that, first of all, I define the, there's a fraction. This, this is the, the, the value that we, I will try to use later to, to calculate this approximation model. And then I define that the fraction, this alpha i, is the fraction of a selected uh, code rate divided by the uh, seeming. So it's, divided, it's defined like this. So this is the fraction that you can say that is the, uh, compared to the seeming, what is the each flow will, what is the codec rate that each flow will choose. And this will influence the, the flow size. So that uh, using this, we redesign our approximated uh, uh, flow departure rate as, uh, as this. Uh, so for elastic throughput, uh, for elastic uh, flow, the departure rate will be defined as before, uh, the allocated resource uh, divided by the mean of the elastic size. But here, the, the departure rate of the streaming will be changed a little bit. So we redefine uh, 
we just say that we, we assume that each user will first of all choose a, the theming of their <coughs> codec, but uh, we but because they actually they don't then choose any uh, theming, so we we try to modify the re, uh, the resource allocated to them like this. So um, the allocated resource as before for elastic data as before is like the same, and then for a streaming flow we uh, we approximate like this, so that you can see that uh, now the system become uh, simpler, uh, and then it, so it can also include a different uh, radio condition. For example, when you calculate the uh, uh, elastic elastic flows through uh, allocated resource, Re allocated resource for uh, elastic flow, it's like this. Uh, this is the the PI, as I say, is the proportional for different channel condition, and the RI is that the throughput of that channel condition. So, uh, using, I mean, this is the very tr uh, traditional uh, way that we calculate the uh, the capacity of a of a cell when you're trying to include more uh, radio condition, and this is the way that we calculate it for uh, um, for a streaming capacity. So that you can see that we have only two classes, and uh, uh, the, the the complexity of solving these two classes is very low, because we only have two. Even that we don't have the reversibility. So, using the model, we can calculate the stationary distribution, pi hat here, and based on this uh, distribution, stationary distribution, we calculate our matrix. So. Try, I'm trying to present you the numerical analysis. First of all, I, I show that what is the performance of approximation model by using an example. Uh, take only two radio condition. So you have uh, the cell age, cell center, and cell age radio condition, and the proportional of each of the classes. And then we, only, we also take the elastic and the streaming user inside. So totally, we have four, four classes. And then we solve this uh, system with the uh, with the configuration of Cmax is two megabit per second, Cmin is uh, 0 0.5 megabit per second, and the uh, sigma, which is the the flow size of elastic traffic, is five megabit. And then we show the performance in three dif in four different metrics. So the first one is the mean codec rate. So as you can see, that the xx here is the system load. When you increase your system load, then your mean codec rate will decrease. And the red, uh, the blue curve one, this one is the is the mean codec rate for the cell cell center, and the, this one is for the cell age. So you can see that cell center is better than cell age. And here, the the most important thing I want to show that is the 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 green curve here is the approximation performance that we obtain, and then the red one is the 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 performance metric that we obtain with the general model, so they they uh, very they are very close. So the second one is the deficit rate. So when you increase your system load, the deficit rate will increase also. But uh, for the cell center, increase slowlier than the uh, the cell age. But here, uh, the most important information I want to tell you is that the approximation and the general model co uh, fit each other. So after knowing that the approximation model is very is good, we're using this, we can, the operator can using this model to do their dimensioning. For example, as we choose the QoS constraint as a, a buffer surplus, star, uh, which is uh, larger than zero, which means that for uh, on average, there is a, when the user Experience uh, the, because the buffer surplus here is the buffer variation that each user uh, will experience during their video consumption. So, if if it's larger than zero, it's uh, for them the starvation probability will be lower. So, if we using this as our QoS constraint, we can we can obtain the system uh, tolerate load is 0.6. Uh, this fraction with the maximum traffic intensity. 
So using the same concept, you can com combine any one of the four metrics that we defined before to design your system, and the operator can know that what is the, uh, the proper lambda, which is the, the system load that, that you can conserve the QoS constraint. Then we play on the other um, parameter. For example, we play on Cmax here. So here we introduce uh, the real, real orange radio condition distribution uh, inside our model. So you can see that here we have 15 classes. So if you're using the general model, then it's too complicated to solve the stationary distribution. But here, because we have the approximation model, so the, the, the solution will be very simple. And then this, these are the configuration that we use. For example, the time is 20 seconds, and et cetera. So here, we, we, consume, we, we configure that C-min is 0 0.5 megabit per second, and we play on C-max. So you can see that this is the mean code error. If you increase your, your load, then your mean code error will decrease. This is sure. But if you play on different C-max, for example, this one is that your C-max is infinite, and then 4, 2, 1, 0, 0 0.5, which is the same as the C-min. Then uh, you, you can see the difference. So if you increase your C-max, your mean codec rate will increase. But you will have a trade-off. If you increase your C-max, also your, your uh, buffer supplies, surplus will decrease. So here, this is the buffer surplus. When you increase with your system load, your buffer surplus will decrease. And as I choose before, the QoS maybe is uh, zero, zero here, which means that the buffer variation is, is, uh, is, a, uh, is a positive number. We want to conserve this. So here, you can see that when you, this, is the, this is the curve. You have a, a 0 0.5 C max, and this is the four, uh, one, two, uh, four, and infinite. So if you increase the C max rapidly, then your buffer size will decrease fastly. And also, the same result you can see that for the elastic throughput. So in, if you increase the C max, then the, the elastic throughput will, in, will decrease. That is because you have more volumes of uh, streaming inside the system. So your uh, average throughput for elastic traffic will decrease. So here, uh, just a one of the examples showing that our model can help the operator to uh, better dimension their system. So I'm, let me try to conclude here and tell you some future work. So conclusion here. First of all, we develop a flow level model for the performance of HTTP adaptive streaming. And then uh, we're using this uh, to help operator to do their dimensioning. And then we second, second we uh, introduce the elastic traffic inside and also the heterogeneous radio condition so that this model will be generalized to solve uh, the general problem. And then uh, thirdly, we propose an approximation model to simplify the numerical result because, uh, as I say, when you have more classes, the complexity of solving the stationary distribution will be very high. And fourth, we use, a, we use a, a model to see what is the impact of, C, of different choices of CMAX. So this is the design of uh, HTTP that is streaming system. And we show the, the trade-off. Uh, there's one thing that I, I forgot to mention is that our approximation model can not only uh, predict the mean value, but also the, the, the performance metrics of each classes. Um, yeah, so this is one of the value. So the future work that we are going to uh, work in the future is that, as I say that before, because we set a lot of assumption, for example, zero chunk size and uh, infinite buffer size. So these two hypotheses should be uh, examined to see that uh, whether they influence the performance. And then, uh, yeah, the relationship between the real starvation probability and the performance metric that we provide here should be examined also. So this is my, the end of my presentation. And thanks for your attention. And if you have any question.
you can. interested by it and the, the thing that um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not convinced about is the controller. So basically uh, the controller you're using is some sort of feed forward control, right? So basically you estimate the bandwidth yeah. and you just select the, the, the codec rate as the measured bandwidth, right? Yeah, as the measured bandwidth. Okay, so uh, can you go back to the um, the buffer size uh, model? This one? Right. So, 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 we so we, because we say that the codec will exactly equal to the throughput, so if you, if you are in this a, uh, status, you didn't, cons you didn't accumulate or consume any buffer. But uh, so, right. the, so the, the buffer surplus here is only when you, your throughput is larger than your CMAX and your throughput is lower than your CMAX. Yeah. Okay. But even, even that, that one, we can, because here we assume that the, the codec, numbers of codec is eliminate, uh, is uh, infinite. So you can choose any codec you want yeah, yeah, here. No, 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 no. Yeah. No, that, so the, the thing is that the, the, the buffer has uh, the dynamics, right? Yeah. So you could, you could, in principle, uh, uh, develop a control law which uh, basically tries to, to uh, make the buffer size uh, go towards a, a, a threshold, right? You, you could do that. So in that case, I don't know if your uh, model mm -hmm. of the buffer surplus would be... This is, here we didn't, we didn't use any controller. We just say that if there is a, a there are elastic, data, elastic data and streaming data inside the system, and then we, if you, we're using round robin scheduling, what will that get? So we didn't, use, we didn't okay. put any control inside. So basically, the controller is only the feed forward uh, component that just uh, uh, selects the video, the, the codec rate yeah. exactly as the bandwidth share, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah but uh, but I didn't mention here, here we assume that the codec number is, limiting, is limited. But uh, in the model, we can also, we, our model can also treat the case that you have limited numbers of codec. Okay. Just so change the, the, yeah. So it's not anymore a continuous variable, but it's a discrete Yeah, it's variable. discrete variable. So it's also, but here is not, here, here is the, this one, the, the, the matrix sub buffer sub surplus here is the mean, is the average. Average view is the average, so, so it's not the, but I think that maybe we can develop some distribution, probability distribution on, yeah. Uh, just another question is about the, the on-off nature of uh, the traffic, you know, of the, the streaming traffic. So you have different approaches to implement uh, adaptive video streaming. You can either have on-off traffic, so if you control the queue, uh, using this uh, this approach, so you when you hit the, the threshold, you just do on off. Yeah. In order to the queue not to grow or to increase. Yeah, that, that is why uh, we we made the assumption here, yeah, the buffer, the infinite buffer. So we didn't control, we didn't include the on off, uh, okay. on off um, model here. So uh, that why we using this hypothesis is because they make the the modeling easier. Yeah. Okay. Last question. Yeah. No. Or, yeah. No. Yes, the question uh, is still on the, the question formula. On the uh, this one? Uh, the same formula, uh, oh. the, the buffer surface. Uh, I do not understand why it is uh, gamma minus C uh, from my side. Uh, C, if I, if I understood well, is the codec rate yeah. that you are using. Yeah. And gamma is, if I understood well, but I'm wrong, uh, is the, the rate when there is no codec, <coughs> the, the natural rate of the, of the stream. What's the gamma? Is it's the share. Share. Is the, yeah, is the share. I didn't understand. Okay, okay. Sorry, sure, I didn't let you understand. Uh, in a real system, uh, the codec rate will uh, vary chunk by chunk. Yeah, that's 
is that a correct assumption? Whereas the rate on the air interface, PIE and R, would vary according to the channel coherence bandwidth. Do you think it will uh, uh, channel uh, coherence time? Do you think uh, it will change something? You mean that if, because here we assume that the, the chunk size is zero, so you mean if we, if we enlarge this one, we take in off this. In the system, yeah. uh, I know that the chunk rate or the codec selection is done chunk by chunk, yeah. you know, which is usually two seconds or five seconds. Yeah, it's usually okay. two, five, or ten. Yeah. Depends on the okay. system. And uh, if we are talking about uh, mobile video streaming, yeah. then uh, the rate on the channel yeah. would be depending on the channel coherence time. Yeah. Because channel is with. Yeah, ch channel and is that very. Is milliseconds or microseconds, or I don't know, less than, much less than a second. In Actually, when, when uh, the, the variations of channel, uh, as you said, that if it's in the scales of milliseconds, it's because of fading. Yeah. But when you, have, when, when you choose your codec, usually here, you, you, will, you will accumulate, for example, a, a certain periods of time. You observe this, what is the average uh, throughput that you will get in this period of time, and then you, you choose, you, you, you think, you saw that this is the throughput you, you get. The question is, would it change the results very much? Uh, yeah. uh, as, we we trying to study this uh, with the, the the chunk size. As we say, uh, as, as as now we know, if you increase your chunk size, you have less chance to adapt your codec. And if you decrease your chunk size, for example, here zero, then you have more chance to chance to the, the, to adapt. So uh, here here we we know that the only thing we know that is that uh, if you have smaller chunk size, you will approach to us. But if you have larger chunk size, then um, you will get a more average view, but actually, what is this? We don't know. Okay. So the, the dynamics of uh, of uh, fast fading will not have uh, any. No, I'm not this. talking about fast fading, but uh, it's the, the, the channel coherence. It's in the order of milliseconds, really? while the flow le level dynamics are are, are 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 larger than than that. Than that. So, so if we proved in, in the papers shown by by. Uh, uh, you think before uh, that the impact of this uh, uh, channel va variations are very small compared to, to the flow to level variations. Okay. So you can consider that R is the average over the channel oh, var the var variations. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, I'm surprised. Yeah. You, no, too late. Okay. I'm surprised you didn't consider a case with zero buffer where where, where the, 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 the the codec. The, 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 the signal is consumed immediately. Uh, the, you, you have a streaming throw, but the... the, 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 the uh, you mean that I didn't compare these cases with our simulation result because... Well, it's just a case you might have considered. I, I yeah. That's the thought, kind of my thought, that the, the, the mu, the, the probability that yeah. the flow ends should be constant, independent of the rate it's getting. Yeah. Uh, the, um, how do you say? Because, the, the, as you say that, Jing, Jing here, uh, if, you, if you don't have any code limitation, then, which means that you don't have any buffer, because you will choose your codec uh, exactly. And you choose the rate which is available, and, and you, let, you stock it all in a buffer and then play it out sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I'm suggesting that the, the adaptive rate means that you're, you know, you're only consuming the, 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 the rate as it's produced, uh, or the signal that it's produced. You don't stock. Well, Never mind. You. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah that uh, okay. Yeah, I didn't compare the result, the, the case in the simulation results, it's true. Okay, let's thank the speaker again.